Well, good Sunday morning, everyone. Welcome to the County Seat. I'm Terry Wood in for Chad Booth this week. Well, here we are, February. It looks like most of us survived the January inversion season. And boy, did we have some inversions in. I don't know if my eyes will ever turn back to their normal color. But today in the program, we're going to take a look at air quality in the state of Utah. We're going to talk with some experts and we're going to find out what you can do to help increase the healthiness of our air. First though, let's take a look at this. Here's an idea of what we're facing. Winter, its defining color is white, but here along the Wasatch Front it's more of dark shades of gray. I'm talking about the inversion that lies overhead when the lid gets put over the valley. These gray smoggy days have become the impetus for residents to start looking for air quality solutions that will ensure bluer skies in years to come. This is a unifying, a unifying rally. Sometimes we come to rallies and we want to blame the other side and we want to get, get upset. We're going to stop idling. We're going to drive cleaner cars. We're going to take mass transit. That's what we're going to do. 200 miles away from the urban center of Utah, similar air pollution concerns are being voiced in the Uinta Basin. The State Department of Air Quality began monitoring Vernal in 2006. In 2009, monitors began seeing elevated ozone levels during the winter. Low-level ozone is an atmospheric pollutant that forms when sunlight reacts with hydrocarbons and nitrogen oxide in the air. We most often think of ozone during heat waves in big cities, but researchers are finding that the right combination of wintertime inversion with the reflective properties of snow on the ground can lead to elevated ozone production. But the fact that we have uh, ozone occurrences which are not, um, how should you say it, they're, they're, they're infrequent, but when they do happen, they're a great concern. And what we have now in terms of policy that's in place are models that are not based on winter ozone models specific and germane to the Uinta Basin. These models that we're using to predict and, and otherwise analyze the ozone that's going on are models that are used across the country in places like Los Angeles and, and New York. The Bureau of Land Management and Utah State University signed an agreement last year that would allow the two organizations to work together to find practical solutions to controlling ozone in the Uinta Basin never before that I'm aware of, and somebody could correct me, where we have a government agency like the BLM, Utah State University, um, a academic institution, and local government coming together in a partnership to say we're going to address this air quality issue, and people are combining resources. So as Leonard Herr from the BLM said today, they've already put in a million dollars into this air resource management strategy and the models that they created, and they're now literally giving those to Utah State and saying, here's a million dollars worth of data uh, and information. Now you take it and go and apply it to the ozone problem in the Uinta Basin. With a large chunk of oil and gas development taking place on public lands and recent proposals from the EPA to pass stricter regulations on ozone, a proactive approach from both the BLM and county governments was necessary to get the ball rolling. It's the county, it's the city, uh, it's our economic development people. Uh, who have said, look, um, we have these non-attainment issues that are looming ahead of us. We really don't understand exactly the science of what's going on. And so what can we do to, to bring everybody together, all of the partners, to make something happen? The ozone problem we have here is different than the ozone problem we might have in Cache Valley or that we might have in, in the Wasatch Front. Very different set of circumstances going on. So once we get this particular model locked down, then I think we can start looking and seeing, so how does winter ozone, what does it look like now we have this model in the Winter Basin? Are there parameters that we can then apply in Cache Valley and other types of basins where these occurrences happen? And those answers could go a long way toward mitigating air pollution all across the state in both the rural and urban communities. And then maybe then we'll be able to identify the white before the gray. For the county seat, I'm Derek Dowsett. Well, that's some of the basics. When we come back, we'll talk to the head of the Division of Air Quality in the uh, state of Utah, the head of the Salt Lake County Health Department, and a county commissioner from Uinta County. Back in a minute. I lived in Phoenix and then down in Orange County in California, and I met a small town girl and she brought me home. 
just the smaller community that makes you feel like when you go somewhere you know everybody. You know, the sporting programs, the uh, dance events, all these kinds of things. You run into people you know and that, that care about you and your family. And that makes it just a wonderful place to have little ones like this. Isn't it time you found the balance you've been looking for? You went to County, Utah. There is a place where looking out means looking in where an impression lasting only a few seconds will be imprinted on a life forever, where courage is forged and innocence rediscovered, where remembering is rewarding and forgetting unforgettable. There is a place where truth is felt and where seeing is believing. There is a place. Remember those good old days? The places you went with your family when you were young. Reinvest in those old memories by making new ones. Beaver County is the perfect place to start that new tradition. Enjoy your favorite pastimes with family and friends. Connect with the history and culture of Utah in a place that's looking to the future. Modern conveniences minus the hustle and bustle of other locales. Beaver County, your adventure starts here. What would you do with an extra day in Utah Valley? Explore the Wasatch Mountains? Snap a family photo at Bridal Veil Fall. Cool off on Utah Lake or the Provo River. No matter what you're searching for, you can find it in Utah Valley. Bring everyone together. Welcome back, everyone. Let's introduce our panel today, uh, experts who have some different degree of expertise in uh, the effects of our air quality in the state of Utah. First of all, we'll start down at the far end of the table here and Commissioner Mike McKee. He's a commissioner of U uh, Uinta County. Uinta County with tremendous growth and, and oil and gas development. And we'll be talking to him about the effects there on the air. Next to uh, Mike is the uh, director of the uh, Division of Air Quality through the Department of Environmental Quality, right, for the state. He's the state air director, in other words. Uh, this is uh, Bryce Berg. And next to Bryce is Royal Delegge. Royal is the director of the Salt Lake County Health Department. Thank you for joining us, gentlemen. Uh, Bryce, let's start with you. If you could give us kind of an overall picture of our air quality situation in the state of Utah. So uh, when we look at air quality here in the state of Utah, we actually have, uh, most of the time, very good air quality. Even in the Wasatch Front areas where we have the inversions and, and really bad air quality at times, about 95% of the time we're meeting all the standards. Uh, one of the challenges that gives us is, is because we have such marked bad air quality on certain days, we have a really good on-off situation and we know that uh, the air quality impacts health. And so a lot of the work that we're doing is, is to reduce those worst days of the year so that we can, uh, again, make better health, better environment for people. We can enjoy the mountains, enjoy the scenery, and just a, a better place to, to live in Utah. You said 95% of the time we're meeting all the standards. What, what standard is it you're talking so about? So uh, on a national level, the, the Federal Environmental Protection Agency develops national ambient air quality standards. And those are the, basically the, the baseline of what is healthy air that protects uh, human health and the environment. Uh, those standards are revised over time, and so uh, since Congress started this process, there's been a number of re revisions, but they do apply nationwide. And then we monitor error uh, across the state, and we compare it to those standards. Mm -hmm. When we don't meet the standard, we then develop a state plan to bring us back into attainment or compliance with that standard. And you said 95% of the time we meet it, you know, the month of January this year, we had some tremendous inversions. Uh, is that part of the 5% where we're not meeting the standards? That, that's it exactly. Uh, we have uh, some real challenges. Not only did we choose to live in the valley floors, but it happens to be the perfect scenario for valley inversions. The, the topography, where we have the, the mountains on either side of the valley, and then we get snowfall at the, mm -hmm. the first of the winter, uh, that creates basically a, a sink uh, where the cold air stays at the bottom of the valley, all the emissions that we add to the valley stay there as well, and then uh, there's a lid put on top with, with warmer air. And so uh, it was the perfect situation. You know, if, if Brigham Young wanted to develop a, or, or choose a place that was perfect for temperature inversions, uh, he did. Uh, <laughs> and so that's some of the challenges that we have that, that other areas of the country really, really don't have to deal with. I wonder if that was one of the criteria I, at the I time. I would hope not. And <laughs> we do have the geologic factor that enters into it, and I guess always has, but there are some things that can be done, and I know we'll be talking about that 
through the program today too. Uh, and you mentioned healthy air. Royal, uh, perhaps as uh, the director of the Salt Lake County Health Department, you can uh, address that issue. The question of the connection between health and uh, environmental pollution, polluted air. Sure, as Bryce said, this is the perfect place for inversions to develop. And an inversion is nothing more than a cold air mass that gets trapped by geologic features. We're in a valley, we're in a bowl, essentially. The cold air mass moves in and it holds all the pollution that we emit into that dome of cold air until the weather front moves it out. That's a natural feature and we have no way to control that. Mm -hmm. What we can control is what we put into the air while it's trapped here. Auto emissions are our primary source. More than half the emissions in the valley come from vehicles. Uh, about a third of it comes from what we call area sources, small businesses, homes, things like that, that through use of furnaces and you know, other fossil fuel generators, that adds to the burden that we have here. And it all gets trapped here. Mm -hmm. Well, take for instance the January inversions. What effect does that have on the health of the community? As the particulate matter, which is the primary concern in, in the January inversions, as it builds up in the valley, small particulate matter can be respired deeply into your lungs. And for people who have underlying respiratory conditions, asthma, COPD, things like that, it aggravates those conditions. But for everybody, it's an adverse health outcome because as you breathe this particulate matter in, and some of this is cancer-causing material, most of it is irritating material to your lung tissues. And you're warned to stay indoors, not to go outside and run, kids are kept in, doors at school. The reason for that is we want them not to breathe a lot of this stuff in because it will aggravate, cause your immune system to stage a response and that's not healthy for you. And somebody compared it recently to smoking a certain amount of cigarettes, didn't they, when it's the yeah, really bad. It's air. essentially like being a smoker and we see a powerful correlation when we have air pollution build up in a valley like the Salt Lake Valley, hospital admissions skyrocket. The longer it lasts, the more pollution builds up, the more people go seek medical relief, they enter into the hospitals. It, it's pretty severe in, in certain cases. And as Royal mentioned, it's not just the lungs that are impacted, it's the entire systems of the body. We know that heart attacks increase during and after inversions. And because we have this on-off situation, we have good air quality, a lot of the time we really see that market impact. And so a lot of the research that has been done on the impacts of, of fine particulate matter have been done here in Utah because we have such a good on-off case study here. Right. Heart right. attacks rise, strokes rise in incidents. It's across the board. It, it's just a bad situation no matter how you look at it. You don't have to have an underlying respiratory condition to have an adverse health effect from this. And I know my eyes burn and my tongue tastes bad when it's really bad in January too. You, you've got some of those similar geologic factors out there in the Uinta Basin, uh, Mike. Uh, what's the situation now with the tremendous growth you're facing and all the oil and gas development as far as your air quality goes? Well, uh, I think Uinta Basin, from my point of view, is in a very different position in the Salt Lake Valley. When I come in the Salt Lake Valley, you can almost feel, taste, and smell the air. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of the time in the Uinta Basin, our air is very good. In fact, in 2012, there was not any exceedances in Vernal. 2014, there were no exceedances. So no, no what? Exceedances as far as the standards uh -huh. in, in Vernal. And so, um, you know, most of the time our air is very, very good. But, but we do have some challenges, and I think a lot of it is perception. Uh, and, and let me just mention this real quickly. Um, you know, with oil and gas, there is, oil and gas has a target on its back. That's 60% of our economy, it's a lot of our jobs. And because we're on federal lands, and EPA has an opportunity to control federal lands, this has a tremendous, uh, you know, potential negative effect, effect upon our, upon our uh, jobs and economy and way of life. We all want to breathe good air, that, don't get me wrong, we all want to breathe good air. And for the most part, we have good air, but we don't want to have, you know, a, a 500 pound gorilla uh, pounding us on something when we do not believe, for the most part, we have a problem out in the base, base. And most of the time, our air is, is very good. Are there some steps you're able to take in the Uinta Basin? Are you, are you? We are, yes, we are. We're, we're, we're taking a lot of steps. In fact, there's a lot of research that's going on. There's some controls, a lot of voluntary, other kinds of methods. Uh, DAQ, DEQ's been involved. 
There's a lot of things that's being done to improve the air as we move forward, and we want to continue to move forward with that because there is a lot of opportunity, I think a lot of low-hanging fruit. And do you differentiate when you set regulations for, say, you win a county versus Wasatch Front counties? We get a few seconds for our break. Here. Again, it is it applies equally across the country, and it is a particular challenge. Uh, the, of course, the population is completely different. The the source makeup is different. And that's why we need to have good research to understand what's the, the the underlying cause there. Well, we know some new ozone standards are coming up from the EPA, and we'll discuss those and the effect on uh, our guests when we come back. that is beyond words. There is nothing to be said, except take your time in Bryce Canyon country. You go through the day to day repeating what you did yesterday. Don't you wish you could access that piece of your life that's missing? Find the beauty, serenity, family fun, or anything else that's missing from your life in the Cedar City Bryan Head area. Gain access to your adventure, whether it's camping, hiking, the arts, festivals, or just a getaway. Visit CedarCityAYL.com for details on all the adventures that you can access in scenic southern Utah. Color. It's something that can be seen. But have you ever wanted to reach out and touch it? Experience it. In San Juan County, Utah color comes to life like nowhere else on earth. Color can be more than an abstract. Color can be your gateway to a new world. Visit San Juan County and explore the past, present, and future in a way that you've only dreamed of. San Juan County, color your experience. It's one of the most incredible wildlife experiences available. And there is no other place in the state of Utah that offers the chance to see so many snow geese in one place. Come join us in Delta for this year's annual Snow Goose Festival. Bring your camera and be ready to join in the fun. Pick your adventure in Millard County. Welcome back everyone. We're talking about our air in the state of Utah, the quality of our air. Healthy, unhealthy, what are we facing and what do we have to do to make it even cleaner? What's coming up for us? That's a, a big factor. And Mike, we were talking a while ago, the, um, the federal government is imposing some new ozone standards, uh, which will take place over a period of years, uh, but will need to be met to keep uh, certain areas in compliance, states and counties in compliance. What will that do to Uinta County, for instance? Well, and it's not just you in a county, it'll be for the entire nation. And, and let me just give an example. Current ozone, st ozone standards, uh, when the uh, Obama administration came in, uh, were set at 80. That's been lowered to 75. There's a new proposed rule to move that down to 65, possibly even as low as 60. And there's some charts and graphs that's been prepared that shows that that would put the majority of the United States in non-attainment. You put, you know, if we put the majority of our country in non-attainment, it is going to economically challenge our entire nation. I think we all want to have good air, we want to have all of those things, but, you know, we need to also build into this, uh, make sure we're doing the right thing. Let's not, let's not get carried away and, and lower something beyond what is necessary for good health. These numbers, Bryce. Yeah. And, and uh, it's really perhaps even beyond, beyond what's possible to achieve. Uh, we've done a lot of work with other western states that show that in the Mountain West in particular, our background levels in really rural natural areas like Canyonlands National Park are at levels that we monitor above the level of the, the proposed standard. And so there's a scenario where we could uh, end up with background, really pristine areas that aren't able to meet the standard with, with no development, no population, and no way to achieve the standard. You mean as far away as from any industry as possible and it's still over the 60 parts per million, you're it, it, Actually, it's, it's, it's over the 70. Over uh, the so, 70. So, so we're already um, yeah, well above the range of that, that new standard. And again, it, it's not that there won't be an added protection if we could meet that, but we just don't see a path 
that we could develop a plan to meet uh, a standard that's uh, above what is the background in this, these uh, Mountain West areas. If I, if I could just add one other thing on this real quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, at Ashley Valley Medical, there was some, uh, Utah State University did a little research, and what they've shown in that research is when we have uh, invert, you know, when we, ha when we go above the standard, mm -hmm. and whether we're in summer or winter, we do not see any change as far as the admissions for the respiratory and the illnesses as far as admissions are concerned. So I'm not sure ozone is the right measurement. There may be other measurements that are good measurements to do that, but I'm just, you know, I'm not sure ozone is the right one that, that ought to be used on that. Well, Mike mentions the Ashley Valley Hospital. What, what have you found, Royal? Well, let me, let me take a step back. <clears throat> a generation or more ago, our air in this country was far worse than it is today. We used to burn coal on a routine basis for industrial and home use, and disease as a result was very common. We've improved dramatically the air quality across the country. We're not where we need to be because we still have adverse health outcomes. And with the standards that the EPA has, EPA has put out on the six criteria pollutants, one we've largely tackled with lead. We took it out of the gasoline. Ozone, particulate matter, nitri nitrates, sulfates, they're still problems. Here in Utah, ozone and particulate matter are the primary concerns. With the standards we have in place from the federal government, with what the state is doing, with what local jurisdictions are doing, Salt Lake County just took some steps in January this year in advancing the no-burn days. Mm -hmm. The state has a proposal on the table now to go even further than that. We're not where we need to be. We need to find technologies. Internal combustion engines are about as good as they can get now. But we also need to change practices. We need to find ways, however incremental, to reduce the pollution loads that we're still suffering from. And a lot of people are working on those solutions, aren't they? Yes, and really the research to understand our particular sources and how the chemistry happens in the atmosphere is very important. And that has been uh, really exemplified in the Uinta Basin. Uh, a lot of the, the research work there has been you know, really led by the county uh, in cooperation with state and federal agencies and really funded a lot of research to understand the chemistry so we don't go after the wrong targets. I think one of the real concerns we have is going after the wrong solution. Right. We don't want to have a shotgun approach. Let's target our efforts so that we're really achieving the results that we're trying to get to. Now there's a lot of discussion here on the program about what regulatory agencies can do, but uh, people can do some things too, themselves, to assist in this process, and we'll talk about that right after this break. Landscapes as diverse as the people who venture to find them await. All you have to do is find a place to begin. Moab, Utah, in Grand County, where adventure begins. TV, check. Four wheel driving, check. Bouldering, check. Mountain biking, check. Hiking, check. River rafting, check. Adventure is about more than just crossing activities off of a list, but hey, if you can find a place that gives you everything you're looking for, all the better. In Emory County, you'll find the San Rafael Swell, trails, lakes, and the small town hospitality you're looking for. San Rafael Country, in the heart of Utah. Visit us and check something off your list. Kanab, base camp for your Southern Utah adventures. You belong in Kanab.
Welcome back, everyone. We're talking today about air quality in the state of Utah, what can be done, what needs to be done. And we'd like to talk for a moment about what you, the viewer yourself, can do to assist in helping our air get cleaner. Let's start with you, Royal. What, what do you think the average citizen can do? Well, one of the steps that, that we took recently in Salt Lake County is we adopted a new regulation. And we're waging an education campaign through 2015 on what people can do, specifically those that burn solid fuel. You have a fireplace, you burn wood in it, you burn pellets, perhaps. We're asking that people reduce that, to reduce the po pollution that's going into the air from normal activities that they, they engage in. Now, fireplaces are a fine amenity, they're, they're desirable, mm -hmm. but most people don't rely on them, they don't have to. So when we have bad air, step back from what you do. And you always, always ask people to you know, drive less, to use public transportation, but things you can do in your home too. Make it more energy efficient, stop burning solid fuel on occasion when, when the inversions are building, simple things like that. And we have information at the health department and the state does too on, on st simple steps people can take to reduce their burden. When you add it all up, you have a million people in Salt Lake County. That's a million actions. And there's going to be more it has in the impact. future. Yeah, how can they find your information? Is it on your website? Yes, go to our website and go to the state's website, look at uh, Division of Air Quality. There's good information there for anybody who wants to find out what they can do. Uh, Bryce, you issue regulations involving industries and uh, helping the counties reach attainment level. Uh, it, do you get involved with uh, individual uh, questions such as burning wood in fireplace, uh, fireplace like Salt Lake County has recently? We do, and people often ask you know, why we aren't in the public or in the media talking to industry. Well, we talk to them directly, and so really our focus when we do media campaigns with uh, the Utah Clean Air Partnership, UCARE, or at uh, airquality.utah.gov is, is where that information is available. <laughs> that is to get uh, some action from individuals. And we're not asking for everyone to just, uh, you know, turn out the lights and close the doors for the, the three or four weeks where we have inversions, but to do something. If you can not drive one day a week, if you can even take your lunch to work one day a week, that, that eliminates a cold start with your vehicle, eliminates some trips. And so just uh, there are tools available, and we're just looking for everyone to do that one thing to improve air quality today. Have you seen a lot of benefit with the use of mass transit along the Wasatch Front? Oh, we have clearly. We've been monitoring in the Salt Lake Valley since 1958, and the trends are going in the right direction, as was mentioned. We, we are making great improvements. We just, uh, as more people come into the valley, we need to make more to accommodate that new growth. And we're going to have more people coming into Uinta County in the Uinta Basin, too. What, what's the future there, Mike? You know, I think the future is very bright in, in uh, Uinta County and Uinta Basin, and uh, we're very involved as well. You know, we're, we're doing a lot of things. We've, we're putting a lot of resource to it. We're working closely with the universities. Uh, there's a number of proactive steps that industry is being involved with. There's a lot of uh, voluntary efforts. There's a lot of things that Division of Environmental Quality is helping with. New rules are coming into place. So there's a lot of things that are being done that I think are beginning to make a difference and will continue to make a lot of difference as we move forward. The Ute Tribe is a good partner here. We've been having discussion uh, as it relates into Indian Country and all of these different issues. So. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. You've given us some good information today, and you can find out more information on our website. Uh, you can see the uh, website right there on the screen, and uh, you'll find out what you can do to do your part. Thank you very much. If you like this video, then we invite you to subscribe to our channel, The County Seat. You can do that here. And we invite you to share with your friends. We also invite you to get all the latest up-to-date information by following us on our social media channels. And if all else fails, make sure that you watch The County Seat Sunday morning at 8.30 right here on ABC4 Utah.